Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, and today in this video, I'm gonna show, how to fix Broadcom Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on Mac OS Sequoia. So before starting, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, then please go and subscribe to our channel and stay connected for the latest updates. So without a further ado, let's get started. To fix Broadcom Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on Mac OS Sequoia, you'll require hacking tool to verify whether the installed card is being detected under Mac OS. A few texts, depending on your card. Open Core Auxiliary Tools for Mounting ESP and Editing Config plist, and lastly, Open Core Patcher for Patching System Volume. Now, firstly, make sure that the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth module is being detected. To check that open hacking tool. After hacking tool is open, locate your Wi-Fi module under the PCIe section. The Wi-Fi module is usually listed as a network controller under the class and subclass column. After making sure that your Wi-Fi module is being detected, now you'll need to install a few kecks depending on your Wi-Fi and Bluetooth module. But before that, let me show you that the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi aren't working. As you can see, the Bluetooth address appears as null, and the firmware isn't loading as well. Here, you can see that the Bluetooth hardware is detected and routed via a USB bus. To tell you, the USB ports are mapped and the Bluetooth port is set as internal, 255, but it still doesn't work, despite being a native BCM94360 CD card, it's from Fenvi and the model is T919. In the Wi-Fi section, there is no info for the installed Wi-Fi hardware. Also in system settings, none of the hardware is working. Now, install the KEXTS according to your Wi-Fi and Bluetooth module. Here is the list of KEXTS that you'll need to use if you have any of the cards installed. Simply use the KEXT combination as per your hardware. The card currently I'm using is an Apple Airport Fanvi card, so I'll be using the KEXTS according to that. You'll get the required KEXTS under the video description. A few KEXTS are directly available for download, and a few of them need to be extracted from the OCLP repository. Now after getting the required texts, open the Open Core Auxiliary Tools and mount your ESP. After mounting the ESP, place the required texts in the text folder of your EFI's OC folder. Now after placing the texts, open config.plist and then add the entries of newly added texts in the kernel tab. After adding the texts, Make sure to keep them in proper order and also set the main kernel version to 23.0.0. Set Blue Tool Fix Up to 21.0.0, required from macOS Monterey onwards, so that these kecks load only on macOS Sonoma or higher, if you intend to use the same EFI for booting prior macOS versions. Now after specifying the kecks minimum kernel, now you'll need to block iOS Skywalk family from loading. For that, go to the block section of the kernel tab and then add com.apple.iocat.io skywalk family as identifier to block the io skywalk family from loading. Please note that the letters are case sensitive after blocking io skywalk family. Now, go to the quirk section, and make sure the disable io mapper isn't checked. Some systems may require VTD for the proper functioning of the Wi-Fi. Ensure that the secure boot model is set to disabled. For that, just select disabled from the secure boot model drop-down list, from the security section of miscellaneous tab. After disabling the secure boot model, go to the NVRAM tab and then select the last UUID, ending with A2. Here you'll need to disable the SIP to allow root patching and add Bluetooth parameters.
After adding the parameters, navigate to the delete section and add the following parameters under the last UUID ending with A2. Now, after making the required changes, quit open core auxiliary tools while saving the changes, and then eject the mounted ESP and after that, restart your PC. While restarting, make sure to reset NVRAM. Now after booting back, open, open core patcher, and now you'll need to patch the system volume. To patch, just click on posts install root patch, then click on start root patching, and then proceed with the prompts. While restarting, make sure to reset NVRAM. And now after restart, you'll have the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth working perfectly like on Mac OS Ventura or prior. And now, as you can see, the Wi-Fi is connected and working perfectly as expected. Also, both 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz work absolutely fine. And here, Bluetooth is also working. As you can see, the Bluetooth now has a proper address along with the firmware. Now, let me show you the speed tests from both 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz.
So that was it, hope it was useful. Consider like for the video, and subscribe to the channel. And if you have any questions, just comment down below, or create a thread on our forum. Make sure to check out the forum for in-depth guides. Thanks for watching and have a great day ahead.